Hello, welcome to a video about how to use this thing called Firebase, which is a database as service. I made a previous video sort of introducing the idea of what database as service is and why that's a meaningful thing that you might want to use. You can go back and watch that if you haven't, or you could just be right here and get started. So this simple basic demonstration that I'm going to show you is, let's say you've made a game that runs in the browser, client-side JavaScript only, no fancy node server-side program, but you want to have that game be able to save a high score. And that's what I'm going to do in this particular video. So let me show you. This is Firebase, by the way. So I'll come back to this in a second, firebase.google.com. But this is my game. So I, the code to this game will be available as part of the video. I'll also have a link to show you the, the video, uh, the part of the video where I actually coded this game. And, but you'll show it's a very simple game. The goal of the game is to click this button as many times as you possibly can. And the more I click it, the higher my score. So if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to click it till I get to like, I don't know, four or 5,000? No, just kidding. Okay, I'm going to stop <laughs> and move on. 43 is my high score. See if you can beat it. And I know you fancy people on the internet will figure out all sorts of ways to auto-click that button of, to infinity or whatever and break and win the whole universe, etc. But I don't care about that. I need to add, uh, I need to be able to save that score with my name or, um, to the database. So let's go to Firebase. So the, what you need to do is go to this URL, firebase.google.com. Firebase is a Google product. So you also will need to have a Google account. I'm already signed into some uh, Google account that I made for this purpose. And now I'm ready to go to console because the console is where I can manage my database on the Firebase website itself. So before I can start adding code to put stuff in the database, I need to go to this console. So I'm going to click on go to console and here I am. Welcome to Firebase. I don't know how well you can see these, but the first thing I need to do is create a new project. So I'm going to do that right now. Create a new project. Project name, my awesome project. Thanks, Google, for that suggestion. I think it's really awesome too. But I'm going to call it my not so, my, my not awesome project. Uh, and then I'm going to say create project. And I'm, I'm accepting all sorts of terms and conditions right now. Uh, and I'm watching the thing spin. I don't have anything to say while it spins. Boy, I hope this doesn't take much longer. This is very awkward. Oh, it's only getting more awkward. What's happening, internet? Ah, okay, so <laughs> there we go. Ah, okay, so um, uh, I don't know if I clicked on something or I just got here, but now I'm in my not, my not awesome project and I'm looking at this and I have some options. So Firebase has, you can use, it's just a generic service on the server where I can say, hey, save this and later if I ask for it, please give it back to me. And what I'm doing here is I want to add Firebase to my web app. So this is a good place where I can click to get started. Of course, if you're using iOS or Android, you can do that as well. And so the key thing that's happening here is that I am getting all this information about how to authenticate into Firebase. So first what I need to do is make sure I have a reference to the Firebase library itself. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to go back to my index.html file where I have a reference to all the JavaScript libraries that I'm using. I'm currently just using p5.js, p5dom.js, and my code that I'm writing is in sketch.js. So I'm going to add this script tag, which now links to the Firebase library. And there's different versions of Firebase. I guess the current one is 3.6.3. .3. Um, and then I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to grab this. So this code, if I zoom in on this, this is the stuff that I actually want to put in my code itself. Config equals all this stuff, my API key, my auth domain, my database URL, a storage bucket, my messaging center ID, and then I want to say Firebase initialize. So this makes that connection to Firebase itself. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just put this in setup. Um, Setup is my, is p5.js is kind of like page loaded function. So that's the event where everything is ready. If you're using jQuery or any other framework, you just want to do this stuff at the beginning once your page has loaded. And then I'm just going to say console.log Firebase just to sort of see that I don't have any errors. So I'm going to go back to my uh, game and I'm going to hit refresh. And this looks good. Looks like, you know, there's all sorts of stuff there and no errors. So I am now connected to Firebase. Excellent. Now, I have to pause for a second because I got to do something a little bit more. You might have noticed like, oh, look at that. In my code is all of my like secret stuff, like my API key and the URL and this messenger sender ID. So 
there's, a, there's an issue here, which is that what I'm doing has no security to it whatsoever. So you have a publish this to the web, anybody could go to view source, could see this stuff. And in fact, I'm not, I don't want to have to authenticate for this quick demonstration into Firebase. I'm not going to add that sort of security code. So I have to go back to uh, Firebase. And I, the next thing I need to do is come over here to the left and click on database. This is actually the main link that I'm going to need, which is going to have all the information about my database. Click on that. And I need to go over to rules. And these rules are now who is allowed to read and write to the database. Some people might be allowed to read. Some people might be allowed to write. And I'm going to do something which is generally a bad idea. But for the kind of quick and dirty experiments I'm doing, no big deal. And I'll talk about, at the end of this video, I'll talk about ways that you can add authentication and security to what you're doing. But I want to focus on just how Firebase works and get the code up and running. So on my uh, website where I have a tutorial, I actually have the, uh, the configuration, the JavaScript configuration that I need, which I just want true for read and true for write for anybody in the world. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my Firebase console. I'm going to paste that in here. And I'm going to hit uh, Publish. And now it's giving me this warning. Your security rules are defined as public. Anyone can read or write to your database. Again, of course, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're having people submit private data or you know, there's some sort of anything that you know, privacy or security is a concern, you wouldn't want to do this. But for a quick example of a high score list, big deal. I don't care if anybody. All of you are welcome. No, you're not welcome. Please don't. But you, you'll very easily be able to hack this high score list anytime you want. OK. So um, let me go back to now, now uh, where were we? So what I want to do now that I've done that is I need to start actually um, connecting to the database. So I don't really remember this stuff off the top of my head. So I'm going to go to my notes here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just grab this line of code. And I, I kind of remembered that. And I'm going to say uh, var database equals firebase.database. So this, Firebase is the main object that is now connected to my online database on Firebase. So now I have that database in a variable. So how is data organized in Firebase? So data, data in Firebase is organized in a tree-like structure, just like a JavaScript object. And the way that you access that tree-like structure is with a reference, or ref for short. So basically, what I'm, I have a very simple structure here where I want to have a scores reference. And in that score, I want to have multiple entries. Each entry, I want to have an ID, which is the kind of thing that databases often have. So each entry has a unique ID because you know, I might have multiple scores that have the same value or multiple score high scores that have the same name and the same value. So if I really want to like, have a unique key for every single entry in the database, that's something that Firebase is going to generate for me. And then each one of these is going to have an ID. And as part of that ID, each one will have a score and a name, a score and a name. So this is just like a J JSON file or an XML file, so sort of a tree of data. The root is scores. Scores has a bunch of children, which is all these IDs, an array of IDs. And each ID has children, which is a score and a name, a score and a name. So you could imagine a much more elaborate and complex way of structuring your data. And I'm sure you'll enjoy doing that in your own thing that you do. But I'm going to keep it simple with this. So how do I access the, the reference and, and data as a path in Firebase? So the way that I do that, it's actually quite simple. I just say um, var, uh, I'm going to say ref equals database dot ref scores. So this is saying, hey, I want to access the scores node in that tree of data. And by the way, if I had multiple games, like I had a snake game, I could say scores slash snake. And then I could have another node, which is like, you know, scores slash uh, space invaders. Or I could have a node that's snake slash scores. And so I can use slashes to kind of like auto traverse that tree by, and point directly to a specific point. Now, what I want to do is I want to store some data in there. So if I just say var, um, um, you know, data equals name. Uh, DTS, which are my initials. <laughs> Apparently, my initial my initials auto convert into database in Atom Editor. Comma. Uh, oh, no, that needs to be a string. And uh, score. Uh, my my high score was forty three, right? And then I can just say reference push data. 
That is, it's as simple as that. I just, I need to authenticate to the database. I need to make a reference to the database. I need to get the database in a variable. I need to make a ref, I need to access a part of the database like the scores node or the scores reference. I make a JavaScript object and I can just push it in there. So let's do that and uh, let's run this code right over here. And I'm gonna hit refresh. And we can see now if I go to the console and I hit, re oops, I need to go, oops, I'm in the wrong place. Du -du 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 -du. I'm going to click over now under data in the Firebase console. I can look at my data and I can see, look at that. This is the tree, my not awesome project. There's a scores and there's this ID which has in it name DTS score 43. There it is. Guess what would happen, by the way, oops, if I run this program again one more time. Look at this. Now it's in there twice. And you know what's great about Firebase is I can actually manage and manipulate the data through this web interface as well. So if I'm just testing out, I'm like, you know what? Those were just my tests. So now I want to make sure I delete this stuff. So I can just delete these entries as well. And now if I refresh, I don't think I need to refresh. I think the page would probably refresh for me. That data is gone. So I can start over. So of course, I don't want to just submit the data um, I don't want to just submit the score, what am I saying, um, like hard-coded in the code. I want to actually submit the score um, dynamically based on the variables and things that are happening in my program. So let's look at how I would do that now. So what I need to add to this program is I want to add a, I'm going to say initial, initial input. So I'm going to say uh, initial input equals create input. I could add this into the HTML file, but, uh, but if I do that on my program, we'll now see I have a place for you to put your initials. I'm doing a terrible job of like formatting this. And then uh, I'm going to add another button, which is going to be the uh, submit button. And I'm going to say uh, submit button equals create button uh, submit. And now I have also this submit button. The idea meaning that I can put DTS here and then I can click submit and I can submit whatever my score is here. Okay? So we're doing pretty well so far. I'm looking at the chat. Now what I want to do is bind an event. When I click the button, submit score. So I need to write a function now. Uh, that says submit score. So I need to now create that data, which is the initials. Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, we'll do initials. I didn't spell that right. Initials. And then what did I call the input? Initial input. Uh, initial input dot value. And the score, which is just the actual score. I'm going to take out this. And then I need to say uh, get all of this. And you know, I think it might be nice just to have the database thing be a global variable. So I don't have to keep like remaking that. So I'm going to put that in setup right after I initialize it. Uh, database equals Firebase database. I don't need this console log anymore, but I do want to do this console log data, and then I don't need this anymore. Right? So the idea is whenever it's time to submit the score, I make a JavaScript object that has the data I want in it. I access the reference in the database that I want and I push add the data to scores. So let's do this now. If I refresh this program, oops, uh, I got an error on line 31. Initials, in, oh, I have a semicolon there. That should be a comma. JavaScript object syntax. Blah. <laughs> Here we go. So now I'm going to put my initials in, DTS. I'm going to try to get my beat my high score 43. Come on. I can't believe you're watching a video of me click this. I'm just going to go to 44. Okay, I got to 45. Now I'm going to hit submit. Looks like it submitted that. I'm going to get a little bit higher and I got a new high score. And then I'm going to get a little bit higher and I got a new high score. All right, high scores. So now what's going to happen here is I should be able to look back in Firebase and I should be able to see, look at all these high scores there. They're all submitted to the database. Wonderful. So now we have a basic program which allows 
you to send data to the database. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is show you how to retrieve the data from the database so I can display a list of high scores. And whenever there's a new high score, I can actually have the page dynamically regenerate without having to reload or have a set interval running. Firebase is just always going to ping me whenever there's new data. So that'll be exciting to see in the next video.